the exercise is essentially saying, why do you wear the mask? What's behind that? What, what is it giving you? What would it look like if you didn't wear the mask? Will you explain the concept of masks to me and maybe even the exercise that we've gone through yeah. um, with masks? And then I want to talk about a new mask that I have realized that I've been wearing. Totally. Shout out to my friend, Joe Spearden. Joe's introduced me to this concept and I loved it. So this concept of masks is uh, essentially, right, we all wear masks. So a mask is something that I would define as a personality trait, uh, a character that we become in a certain situation because fill in the blank. Ultimately, we it's usually protecting us from something. It's usually because of an expectation we have around someone. It's usually like it could be a lot of reasons. Uh, but you, what I would tell you is, is I know I'm in a mask when I'm filtering, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a really interesting concept because it's like, what am I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to protect myself from whatever. So we wear these masks and we go through our life and multiple masks and the exercise is essentially saying, why do you wear the mask? What's behind that? What, what is it giving you? What would it look like if you didn't wear the mask? You know, the the this is an exercise we do uh, at the Evolution Project. Right. Check out the shirt. Check out the shirt. Thank you. And um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show people that the armor, the mask that you've been wearing has served a purpose at this point in your life. But ultimately, we want to create a safe enough environment where they can take off the mask, take off the armor, take off the heavy load, and just try that on for a minute. And see what their life would be like on the other side if they went back into their life and they didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And what are some of the masks that you uh, maybe ha wear yourself or have worn mm. or that you observe men when they go through this exercise describe the mask that they might be wearing uh, to kind of illustrate further to people listening? Yeah. Most common mask that I would tell you I hear men say humor is for sure a mask. It's, it's a great deflection. Mm. Another mask is uh, imposter syndrome. That is almost privately universal. And the imposter syndrome is if people knew who I really was, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't like me. Yeah. There'd be recourse to that. So All the right. imposter syndrome is, is I got to keep faking it because if they really knew who I was. Yeah. I'm going to be found out. They're going to, yep. It's just okay. a matter of time. Now I'm going to jump in because this is the mask. Yeah. So I know, and I've, I've been for, for years, literally years, saying out loud to people, to my wife or close people to me, that I'm like, I'm the poster child for imposter syndrome. Like, I just... like you just want to embed this... Sh th sorry, well, I caught myself, Randy, because we're keeping... <laughs> keeping this PG. We're keeping it PG. Um, Thanks, Mom. I've been... I've been in, in the... Justifying to myself that saying I'm being aware yeah. by calling out that I have imposter syndrome. Yeah. And, and relying on that, like, oh, I noticed that I have it. Well, isn't it funny... You yeah. could even, you even use the mask to actually like stay in the mask. Yes. And that's exactly what I've been doing for a long time. Yeah. Cause it's, right? so it's not even like an unaware mask. It's like, oh, I'm very aware. Yeah. It's like, I've got the mask on, but then I've got a, I, I just wrote with Sharpie on it. Yeah. I have imposter syndrome. Yeah. And, and that, but I didn't take the mask off. Totally. So anyhow, I, I, I felt that like, oh, I'm going to be found out like, you know, I'm just Randy. Like, why would you listen to me? Like, it, totally. what, whatever my version of imposter syndrome is. Yep. And I suppose it has been helpful for me to identify, oh, like to call out that that is something rather than to just feel it inside, but to identify it. But then I've just relied on having identified it for so long mm -hmm. and not doing anything about it and just saying, oh, I have imposter syndrome. And I'm trying to not feel it. That's I'm right. trying to get away from it. It's that whole fear thing. I'm like, oh, you're safe over What's here. What's the feeling you, you don't want to feel, Randy? Yeah, and I don't want to feel imposter syndrome, and so I'm running from it. Yeah. Well, but by the way, look at how look at how creative your mind got. Yeah. To identify it and then keep it on. Yeah. Like, isn't that wild? Yeah. This is all happening on a well, subconscious and level. Convince me that I didn't even know that I was doing that. That's what I'm saying. And it's only recently, again through meditation and breath work, but all of a sudden I had this this clarity come to me that that the imposter syndrome yeah that 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 thing if i were to identify it as an object and kind of stand back and look at it right it's all feelings it's all emotions inside but if i were to be able to do that it's not something for me to walk away from 
but it's actually an indicator to me that I am on the right path, that this is the invitation. Yep. That is the invitation. And I am to take its hand. Yep. And I'm to walk with it. That's right. Because of course I feel imposter syndrome. Yeah. Do you know why? Because, because you're I'm doing, in a place I've never been. That's right. Because you're doing so, you, you have crossed a threshold. I've crossed a threshold. I'm 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 it's it's the evidence that I'm trying to become something yeah. better than I once was. Well, and and the fastest way to, to crack it is is like go public. Like walk into those scary parts and start to go public. That that is very revealing. Like everybody knows you have a podcast now, Randy. Not only that, you have a great podcast. And I'm not just saying that. Like you've done a great job. And now there's a level of like expectation of like, all right. And I guarantee you there's a voice in your head like, can I keep this up? Right? You know, like I, I, like this is the voices. Like uh, untethered soul. Right? It's the, it's the uh, what is he called? The, the roommate. Mm-hmm. And this is part of the human experience, Randy. What if the roommate was your higher self actually leading the conversation to like the next, right? This is that concept of past, present, future. We are always onto ourselves. I so believe that. And I, I just believe that the highest level that someone's going to take action is when they know it. So it's like you're talking about this. My imposter syndrome led me to I'm right on the right path and I got to keep going forward.